G'day guys and welcome to another video. Now today's tutorial is going to be within GarageBand 10 and we're going to be looking at how to make the most out of that automatic software drummer. So in old versions of GarageBand, you could have everything sounding as professional or as realistic as you wanted it to, but often tracks would give themselves away in the drums. You know, if you were using the keyboard, piano um, to trigger sounds using the like the rock kit and the pop kit, it was often a dead giveaway that you'd use GarageBand and it kind of just lowered the quality of your project. So GarageBand 10 was a massive step forward in that it came out with this realistic, good sounding drum kits with realistic sounding playing behind it. Um, now you can run into a few problems though when using the automatic drummer because often if you've got a really specific beat or feel in your mind that you know you want in that part there, often you're just stuck with what the auto drummer plays for you. So I'm gonna be trying to show you how to make the most of both worlds today. And um, we're gonna be looking at how to use a combination of a few different things to get exactly what you want, whilst also maintaining that realistic drummer sound. So let's jump to the computer mode and we'll get into it. Okay, so we're here within GarageBand and first thing I wanna do is play you where I want the drums to come in. So here with the bass, have a listen. Okay, now just quickly, I've got quite a specific idea in my head of what I want the beat to be. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create the track. So command option N, and I'm just gonna create my drummer track. Now, first thing you'll notice is that it's gonna create, uh, it's gonna create if we zoom out here, two different tracks. Now one is basically a verse beat and the other is a chorus beat. Now you can create these again later on, so it doesn't matter, you can just delete them or whatever. Just delete one and then keep whatever one, it doesn't matter at all. Now first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line that up with where beat one is, which is about there. Yep, and I'm just let's just have a listen to what it's come up with so far. Okay, look, it's not quite what I want. So I'm just gonna come over here to drum kit and um, I know that Manchester is quite a good kit for this style of song. So I'm gonna change the kit to that, first of all. And we'll have a listen. Okay, so I like that sound of the kit, but the beat isn't quite what I want. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come across to here and I'm gonna turn this percussion slider all the way down. Um, and I'm actually, I don't want hi-hat, I want cymbals in this little bit because it's like a bit of an interlude before the verse, so I want it up a bit. So we're gonna, uh, instead of having it on hi-hat, which is where it was, we're gonna click the cymbals. Now I'm gonna assume that I don't want it that complex, but we'll have a listen. Yeah, so you can hear that he's kind of crashing the ride a bit, so I'm just gonna bring that down, let's, let's say to two and we'll hear. So that's what I want, I want him tapping the rod. I don't want him crushing it, I don't want it too light. Um, so tapping the rod, and that's, that's where I'll leave it. So on number two. Now with kick and snare, actually instead of using this slider down here, I actually want it to follow the shaker. Now often you'd think, oh, I'll get it to follow the bass, but the reason I want it to follow the shaker here is because it's got that consistent 16th style beat to it. So I'm gonna hit follow, and it's automatically selected shaker for me and we'll have a listen. Okay, it's getting close-ish to what I want, except there's one really big standout thing that I don't like, which is the kick drum. Now I'm gonna address that a bit later. So first of all, what I know that I want the snare to be doing is to be doing a lot of ghost sort of taps. And if you don't know what they are, I'll try and show that to you here. So let's, um. I know that it, obviously with ghost notes, it's gonna be a bit more complex, but they're also quite a quiet element of the snare drum. So I'm gonna assume, just bringing my complex slider and down here-ish, it's gonna give me these ghost notes. And what I'm gonna do actually is, because I don't like the kick drum, is I'm gonna turn it off. So let's turn that off and let's have a listen. Okay, now that's actually exactly what I want for the ride and for the snare. That's exactly what I want. Obviously, we've got the issue of no kick drum. Let's turn it back on and we'll have a listen with the kick in. Okay. 
Okay, so because I've dragged the complex slider up all the way up here, it's you know there's a lot of kick drums happening, and, and I'm not a big fan of that. I like a nice, solid, consistent kick drum. So that's why I've turned it off. Now, we'll turn it off, and obviously that gives us a bit of an issue because you need a kick drum. Well, I mean, it depends on the song, but for the most part, it's really important to have a kick drum there. So what do you do? Well, this is my technique to kind of combine the best of both worlds, like I mentioned before, to kind of get exactly what you want. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new software instrument. Now you can't create another drummer because you can only have one per project. So we're just going to create a software instrument. So double click that, let it load up and I'm going to come up to drum kit. Now I know that the kick drum sound that I want is actually called Motown Revisited, but the good thing is you get access to all these kits. So you can just go through and have a listen to what you like the sound of. So I'm gonna hit Motown Revisited. And what I'm gonna do now is actually bring up my musical typing keyboard. And that's the tom, so let's come down an octave. There's the kick drum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna record what I want the kick to play. So let's just give this a go. I'm gonna turn on the metronome and forgive me because I'm doing screen recording and everything, it's probably gonna be quite laggy. So let's just give this a go. Okay, so that wasn't horrible, but I had to kind of play it half a second earlier to try and fix it. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to click on the MIDI track we just recorded. And if you're not already on it, come up to editors here, this little scissors tool, and then come down here, just make this a bit bigger. And just make sure you click in this area just to kind of enable it. And then we're going to hit command A to select all our MIDI notes we've just recorded. And we're going to quantize them, which is basically like snapping them to, to time so that it's more in time than what we originally recorded in. So I'm going to try 1 16th note and let's play that to hear what it sounds like. Okay, that is exactly what I want, except for obviously it, I missed a kick over here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Let's just okay perfect so now we're really at a point where i'm this is kind of the beat, the exact beat that i had originally envisioned in my mind now the only issue is because I've, I've you know made this slider here quite soft it's made the whole drum sound of the snare and everything quite soft which is is probably a little bit underwhelming within the track so the way that i'm going to fix that is i'm going to come up here to smart controls and I'm gonna use my compressor. Now, the reason why I don't just boost the volume track is I like to have a bit of room to move if I wanna do a bit of automation later on, or you know, if I wanna bring it down just half a dB or whatever, I don't wanna be maxed out so that, um, you know, so that I, I have no room to move upwards later on. So that's why I like to use the compressor because I like using those faders later on. So let's just hit play and we'll see what volume we need to bring it up to. Cool, so about there, seven or eight dB is what is an appropriate volume, I think. So guys, that's the way to do it. It's, it's basically using a combination of what the automatic drummer plays and then anything that you don't like or that you kind of envisioned differently, you can then actually play it yourself using the software instrument and using a combination of both maintains that realism whilst also providing that you know exact beat that you had in your mind. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. You know, drums are such a crucial part of any music track that you listen to. They can often be the make or break between a, a good professional sounding track and an amateur sounding track. So I really do hope that you're able to use some of those tips that I've taught you um, in future projects to get not only a realistic sounding drum kit, but also, you know, having the, the beat play what you want when you want it. Anyway, I also just want to quickly say a big thanks to everyone who's been watching and liking the videos, um, and especially to those of you who have been subscribing. It genuinely does mean a lot to me, and I probably wouldn't make these videos if there weren't people watching and learning from the stuff that I make. So, big thanks to you, and I'll see you in the next video.